Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, and I am streaming live from, let's see, where am I at today? I'm in Richland, Washington today, so um, not too far away from home, and I think Hans is in Moses Lake today at his office, so I'm super excited for him to share his story. Hans is going to share his, not just his weight loss story, but um, also his just in, incredible health journey, because as you guys know, if you follow this podcast, um, the most dangerous thing we can do as an American is to be overweight, because more people die of cardiovascular related disease as Americans than any other thing, and um, obesity is a major cause of that. And there's a lot of health conditions that get better, that are caused by obesity and can get better when you lose weight. So. Hans is going to share his story today, and without without further ado, Hans, I'm just going to let you introduce yourself and get started. Ah, good morning. Uh, yeah, I'm Hans Workentine. I'm a local teacher here at the high school. Uh, I've been involved in our football program for many, many years, and I think I was kind of the, the typical guy. You know, I was pretty active. I, you know, and you're, you're in your 20s, and your pant waist size is 32, and then you get a little older, and yep. Well, heck, the store sells 34s, and then, you know, they sell 36s and and, <laughs> and, and whatnot. And I, I think gradually over time, I think a lot of men and women, you get bigger. And I, you know, I hit my 50s, and I kind of started thinking, okay, this is just stupid. But I kind of kidded myself that kind of still doing the same thing and expecting different results, you know, and, you know, that doesn't work. And so... Finally, um, Shelly Workentine, who's just, that'd be another podcast. She's my former wife, but we were back to hanging around each other after many years. And she said she was going to do something. And she wasn't, she wasn't somebody you would consider heavy. I mean, she's a little heavier than she'd been, you know, years ago. But um, she started on this wellness program. And I was like, looking at her going, wow, it's working for her. And then she started helping some other people. I'm like, oh, it's working for them. And in all reality, the hardest part was just saying, starting. Yeah. And, and once I started, God, I got up in that 260 pound range, you know, wearing size 40 jeans and it's a pain in the butt just to tie your shoes, you know, and, and you get less active. It's not as easy to be active, so you get less active. And I was taking high blood pressure medicine, and you know, your knees hurt or your ankles hurt, so you're taking ibuprofen, or, or you know, you're just you get more sedentary. And so finally, in March, you know, kind of kicking and screaming, Shelly got me going, and I, I've never been on a diet where I really lost, you know, was super successful, and I lost 20 pounds really pretty quick couple weeks and it was like wow this feels pretty good and it, it kind of inspired me to keep going and then when you get down 40 pounds you know that's that's dang near a big bag of dog food that you're not carrying around anymore right. and, and you know first your clothes start to fit right you know instead of you know <laughs> you don't have a big belly over that your, your belt buckle or whatever and then and then they get too small or too big and once I lost about 45 pounds, um, you're inspired to be more physically. Like I watched some of the stuff you do on, on you know, I watched your barefoot skiing and, and whatnot. And you get kind of inspired and you feel better yourself. We had a goal. And I think goals in life are important for whatever you're doing. Um, Shelly and I made a goal to lose so much weight. And if we did it in June, we were going to go to Belize. And we did it. And we went on vacation. It had a fabulous two weeks in, in Belize. Um, something we're, we're actually going to take our boys back there this spring break. Won't quite be as quiet. But um, <laughs> yeah. so, so I think goals are important. But once I lost about 45 pounds, my, my old football coach, who, who became great friends with, I've coached with him for years, Greg Cottrell, he called me out to come down to CrossFit. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I could not have done it before I lost some weight, without a doubt. And I, I got hooked. I mean, so I, I've kept on regular eating or healthy eating, but I really got hooked on CrossFit. Um, yeah, I thought that was a big day. I mean, that's my, <laughs> that's, that's my, 
I've been hanging around that guy behind me since I was 16. So wow. Um, yeah. Is that, is that is that Craig Luttrell? That's Greg Luttrell right there. Yeah. Okay, so I, I didn't realize that. So he's about your age then. No, he's he's 67. Is oh, he looks really good. He is really good. Yeah, he looks yeah. great, and he's another guy that has taken kind of control of his. You know, he's a big dude already, and he's taking control of where you know what he's eating and and working out and whatnot, and and feels great. And he's you know he and his wife, I think they're they're traveling right now. So that's awesome. That, that was a big day for me. I actually touched my toes to the bar, you know, hanging on to it, which probably sounds kind of corny, but. It's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely not. You got to have a strong core, and absolutely. Yeah. Right. So tell us, tell us, Hans. Um, there, there's usually in somebody's weight loss journey, there's usually the a final straw where somebody says, "Okay, this is it. I'm done." Did, did you did you have a aha moment like that? I, I kind of, you know, the fall before I started, I didn't even like riding my bike. I mean, my belly's in my way, and. I kind of stumbled across some pictures and I found a picture of my dad and my dad was, he was like 80 or 81. He's 89 now. And he was on his bike. He lives kind of in the Mont Lake area and he had biked out to my house. And I started thinking, well, geez, he could ride his bike six, seven, 10 miles in his early eighties. And I'm struggling now. I better get my butt doing something, you know? And, um, that was pretty inspirational. And then um, kind of back on the medicine thing, my, my dad's had a couple bouts with cancer and he, he had stage three small cell carcinoma. He had renal cancer, had his kidney taken out. He had um, stage four melanoma. Wow. And he recovered from all that. A lot of people don't even know he was that sick. But I think it was because when he hit those challenges, he was in shape. Yeah. Yep. He had been an active guy. He, you know, in his early years, he ran Bloom's Day every year. And that turned into biking. It was a little easier on him as he got older. And I don't know if you remember Mel Olson. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he Mel was riding. Olson. Well, he was riding up till the day he died. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And Mel Olson and my dad used to ride together. He used to, one of the things they used to do was – uh they get on the GTA bus with their bikes and take them to Cooley City and then bike home. Wow. <laughs> you know, they did that in their late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. Neither one of them could hear, so I was figured they were going to get squished on the highway somewhere out there. But, uh, so that, that was – he was pretty inspirational. You just start thinking, like, okay, I'm in my 50s. Do I want to spend my 60s sitting, you know, in a recliner watching everybody else live or – do I want to be the one out there living, you know? Here's some before and after pictures of you. So tell us a little bit about that. What was your before weight? What was your after weight? And what were the dates? Uh, uh, the 2021 school year, that was right. So that would have been um, 1920, probably taken in September. And I was in the 260, you know, depending range, right in there, a little over, a little under. Um, and this following year, this this September, uh, I was under two hundred, and good job. You know, I lost enough weight. I mean, even my glasses didn't fit right. I had to go get my glasses resized because I had head fat for God's sake. So, um, it, it's been good. I, I like I tell. I got started on that CrossFit, stayed on eating healthy, and, and I don't call it a diet. You know, whatever your, your, your diet could be, McDonald's three times a day. Whatever, absolutely. If yep. it's not not starvation or deprivation, any of that, it, it, it's just a lifestyle. And, and it's kind of funny. Across with Kelly Bragg, she she used to be Kelly Canals, and she was one of our football TAs way back when. Her job used to be to make sandwiches for our kids because some of them lost too much weight, and so we'd feed them. But uh, she she's done a good good job, and now it's something to look. You know, I just do it three times a week. I'm, I'm not. I can't keep up with the 20 year olds, but I have fun and, and it, it makes you feel good. And um, yeah, we actually, in a couple of weeks, I'm not sure the exact date, but we're having um, the Moses Lake CrossFit team, one of their uh, managers um, on our show to talk about CrossFit. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. Yeah, I will. Definitely. I think 
kind of thinking about it, you know, eventually I got down 70 pounds and, and I'm not sure if I'll go a lot more, you know, um, but you kind of look at things and you got your diet or whatever you eat, you know, you got your physical activity. And then I think it ties into your just mentally, um, you, you absolutely out, eating healthy. I think you're mentally sharper. Um, I think there's something to be said for having, you know, a positive mindset or, or, or growth mindset. Um, for me, I'm working on some new things at school and, and I have more energy than I would have five years ago by far. And, and then I think the other thing is when you, when you start rolling all those things together, it kind of, I don't want to say who you associate with, but, Active people, te- you tend to notice other active people. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. All those things inter- interact, and it keeps spiraling in a, in a good direction. But I think you could also let all those things interact and spiral in the wrong direction. You know, if you. So for me, it's it, it's been great. Um, you know, I noticed that, like I mentioned, you barefoot skiing, water skiing, and it kind of made me laugh because we used to water ski all the time. Um, in high school, we used to do this game. You had, to, you had to try to barefoot at least once before you could get back in the boat. You know, we, yeah, yeah, right. You have to drop a ski. And, and I never did a, uh, uh, I just biffed it, you know, but um, some of my friends could do it. So you, I find myself watching little things like that. And it's inspirational. And you, you, you go, well, I want to, maybe I want to water ski this summer. I haven't saw them skied for 15 years, you know. Yeah. And I will tell you, um, you know, one thing that was frustrating for me, that's kind of a story that made me lose weight years ago is that I couldn't get up on one ski anymore. And I was like yourself. I don't know. Did you grow up in Moses Lake? Yes, I did. Yeah. And so did I. So, you know, we were skiing all the time and, you know, deep water start on a slalom ski. And I, when I couldn't do that anymore, it was pretty demoralizing. And, you know, and it's amazing how losing weight made it so much easier i didn't have to you know i'd have to get up on two skis and drop one right and you need a huge v8 right and you need a right right (laughs) and so i'm still pretty picky about the boats i ski behind because even though i can get up pretty easy um as you know skiing behind an underpowered boat is not any fun if you're deep water tall and ski it's just to me it's not worth it anymore so i usually just ski behind tournament boats only (laughs) (laughs) uh you know the the other thing is i I have a boat you know i like to fish a lot and, and just be on the water you lose the weight you're a little safer on your boat you're like my balance and it, it, you know what i'm saying jumping up getting off yeah. the rock and in the boat and loading the boat whatever all that stuff is just so much easier you know, well you talked about mental um you know makes your mental health better and i've said it many times in our podcast um is that the best extra the best um antidepressant ever invented is exercise um, and I'm sure you feel that way when you come out of CrossFit that you just, you know, I mean, you always usually feel great. Now, sometimes if we beat ourselves up too much in a, in a workout, you don't always feel great. You're not going to be depressed. You're just hurting a lot, but, um, exercise and diet is so important. It's not just physical health. It's our mental health. And when we feel, when we feel better physically, we're going to feel better mentally. We're going to, when we look better physically, we're going to, we're going to feel better mentally. It's just, it's, it, it's all in our overall health. To- totally agree. I-, I look at, you know, I st- start looking at some people maybe around work, other places that maybe tend to be a little negative or, you know, it- it's more cloudy than sunny. And one thing I think a lot of them have in common is they don't move. They're, they're, right. they're pretty, you know, subtle individuals. They-, they sit. And I think moving you know, getting a good sweat going a couple times a week um, totally changes, totally improves your your mental focus and, and how you feel. And uh, I think the other thing is you lose a bunch of weight and your your clothes fit right. You know, the, the expensive part for me losing weight was I had to buy all new clothes, which, you know, I went from, I think those pants and that picture right there, probably yes. a 40-inch waist, which is ridiculous, and I'm wearing a pair of 32s today. 
That, that's awesome. Congratulations so, to you. That is awesome. It keeps spiraling because it's easier to, I mean, you know, like the boat's easier. Uh, you know, we were hunting this weekend and I had to, well, we sailed a couple of, I had to go on the other side of the pond and cross a fence. And, you know, when you're 260 crossing a barbed wire fence isn't any fun. Now, it, you know, it's no big deal. It's yeah easy. So, yeah, it's amazing the things that just get easier after you lose weight. And you just, you know, I think as, you know, as you kind of alluded to, we just kind of gain weight slowly as we get older i mean we don't have to but a lot of times we do and then all of a sudden there's just a lot of things that you weren't doing anymore that you didn't realize it um and then you start doing some of those things and then you realize wow when i was you know 70 pounds heavier i couldn't do that i mean just simple things like um i was talking to somebody a few weeks ago and getting off the floor i mean from <laughs> laying down to standing up it was difficult and, and, you know, now once they've lost weight, it's easier. So, um, and the reason that they didn't know that is because they hadn't really tried that after they'd gained so much weight. Right. I, you know, this, the other month, my, my youngest son moved into a new place in Spokane and I was putting together his bed and I realized, you know, I'm on the floor and it, I probably wouldn't have done it. I would have done it, but it would not have been as easy, you know, right. as, it's just easier to do simple things and, and I think that your balance has to be better. Yeah. All of it. So, so tell me a little bit, you said, you know, you're hanging around more active people, um, doing more active things. So, um, have you, have you seen that some people have tried to, you know, you've inspired them? Um, yeah, to a point, I, I think yeah. Shelly really has, she is, um, really done a great job, but yeah, you, you, people start asking you, you know, what are you doing? Or you look good. You know, it feels good when people say you look good, but you know, they're curious and, and, and whatnot. So, and, and then you, your friends, they, they want to do stuff. So um, I'm looking forward to the spring to get outside a little more and get back on a bike or, or I enjoy a good walk too. I, in the fall or in the winter, I, I have a little lab and we do some quail hunting and pheasant hunting and, you know, and you hook up with other people that like to do that. So it, it's, it's fun. And it's all, the other thing I was going to say about clothes is I don't care what your profession is. If, if your clothes fit right and you walk into a meeting, you have to be more confident. You know what I'm saying? To get up in front of a yeah. bunch of people, if you can't tuck your shirt in or it's kind of tucked in and, you can almost see your shoes, but you can't. And <laughs> it, it, it gives you a perfect, I think it gives you a professional confidence in yourself. And I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Um, it, it, it says a lot, um, you know, when you can, I mean, you know, when you can dress nice and not look sloppy, um, it says a lot and it can do a lot for you professionally too. I mean, I, I, I know I feel a lot more confident when, you know, I used to even like to look at myself in the mirror when I was, you know, overweight. I don't know if you had the same. Yeah, yeah. I just wouldn't look. I mean, you know, I get out of the shower in the morning and I would not look. And, um, you know, and so obviously I was not confident. And I can tell you that I've had more success, um, you know, not just personally, but also professionally in my career, you know, after I lost weight. So, and I think a lot of it is like you say, it's just, you, you have more confidence. Right. It, yeah. Ton more confidence and, and it all spirals and then you have more fun and then you feel better and then you make sure you eat better and you stay out. I mean, it just spirals and spirals. It's a, it's a good thing. It's a, I like it. Um, so yeah. tell me about your bike riding. How much you ride your bike? I used to ride. Well, <laughs> way back. Cottrell and I and a couple others um, at lunchtime at the high school, we had just enough time we could bike to the fairgrounds and back. Oh, is that right? And we did a, I probably didn't smell so great the last class of the day. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, we used to do that. Um, I used to go on little 20 mile bike rides. So not that hard. I see some of the stuff you do, not, not, not that hardcore downhill stuff, yeah. but uh, um, did it. I also. 
I, I kind of watched my cousin. I have a cousin that's a little older than me, and he and his wife have raced bikes all over the world. Oh, wow. My cousin's wife used to have the fastest time in that, what's it called? I did a sport to 300 miles across the snow in Alaska. Wow. So I, I watched some of that stuff. Um, and I, I enjoyed, you know, 15, 20 miles, but I got where it wasn't that comfortable. Yeah. You know, you get bigger and you try to get on your bike, you got a belly in your way. And, and so I'm really, this summer was good. Um, I'm thinking next summer is going to be even better. I, I watched you do some of that downhill uh, action. Last summer, two summers ago, we sat, um, we were at Big Sky, Big Sky Ski Resort. Yeah. And we're sitting in Scissor Bills there and, and, and watching the guys come down the mountain. And, and I mean, it, sadly, the entertaining part was about every 15th guy just bit it, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's one thing about downhill. And it's, it's, it's a good spectator sport because somebody's going to crash for sure. Uh, yeah. So. I, I've never been to uh, the big sky. It's Bozeman, right? Yeah, it's out of Bozeman. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, I've talked to some guys there that that have ridden there, and I just I, I never have made it there. I should uh I should make a trip there. I heard it is a pretty good mountain. I know it's a good ski mountain, and I think they built a mountain bike uh course there just a couple of years ago. Really, it hasn't been there that long. So, right, it, it is it is a beautiful place to go. I mean, and there's some beautiful hikes there, and you know, it's just back to being active. There, there's yeah. things to do. Um, right. So tell me what your routine as far as, you know, what, what were you doing that was getting you in the most trouble when you were um, overweight as far as eating goes? I, I think the biggest thing I did is I would eat a lot of, I call them cheap or worthless calorie carbs, you know, or chips or, you know, something yeah. felt good for 30 seconds while you ate it. And then, later you didn't feel so good or right um, I, I enjoy now i enjoy eating food that doesn't have ingredients you know food that's just whole food I, I enjoy steak i enjoy chicken and fish you know i i always like vegetables i've kind of shied away from like baked potato with all the butter and, and whatnot but I, i'll eat the steak and i eat the fit you know what i'm saying I, i'm yeah. never hungry i'm actually less hungry than i've ever been i I used to be able to graze that high school ending where every place where there was a snack or a miniature candy bar or a donut, you know, I had that yeah. I've been there 30 years. I knew where it was. And, and then you get on an exercise bike and realize how much work it is to burn a hundred calories. And you kind of start to think, well, maybe I should be a little more conscious of what I'm throwing in the old system. And, you know, it makes a big difference. Well, and, and we say it often, and this is not original to me. Um, I, I learned about it years ago. Um, but you can't, you can't exercise your way out of a bad diet. It, it, it's impossible. I was, um, yeah, and I, that was something that I always thought, oh, yeah, I'll just do a little extra. Right. Well, one, you can't do a little extra because you don't feel like it. Right. <laughs> and No, you have to exercise 24 hours a day. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's impossible. I, I read something. I um, can't remember where I read it. You probably know. I read that like 100 years ago, people averaged about five pounds of sugar a year in their diet. Americans now eat over 140 pounds of sugar a year in their diet. And, and I, I don't think that's been good for us. No, and I'm I'm not sure the numbers, the exact numbers, but there is a lot of truth to that. And, you know, I think one of the issues is, is, you know, you alluded to it earlier, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, because let's face it, um, fruits and vegetables have sugar in them. I mean, you know, if you use the, the, the definition of sugar, you know, they have uh, fructose and sucrose in them. But I mean, so the problem is largely is, you know, processed foods with added sugars in them. Um, cause you know, um, an apple or a banana is got, I guess, relatively speaking, you know, quite a bit of sugar, um, I guess, depending on how you define it. But, um, I dare you Hans to eat, I dare you to eat three apples. Could you eat three apples? Uh, no, I ate one yesterday, but <laughs> yeah, right. You can't eat three of them, but you know, could you, could you eat three donuts? I mean, I could. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, right. It's just, it goes so easy. So when you eat real food, it's just, you you, you know, it's satisfying. Um, you know, you're, you're full. You uh, don't crave more. I mean, you know, I, I think chicken breast is a great example. And, and I'm, I, I think I've said it before. I'm not a big fan of chicken breast because um, I like a little bit of fat. Um, and chicken's pretty lean. So, but you know what? I don't know if I could eat more than one chicken breast. I, I mean, definitely not more than two. I mean, that's just a lot. And, and you think about it, that's only 400 calories. Right. But, They're good calories. Yeah, right, right. And, but, you know, you can eat 400 calories in one donut. Easy. Right. And wait three minutes and eat another one. Exactly. Right. right. So, we're there. So, Right. It's all about eating real food and stay away from the processed foods, which does have a lot of added sugar. So um, this, this morning I had what what now has become more of my typical breakfast. I had a couple of eggs and I like to throw a scramble room with some spinach thrown in there and yeah. throw in a little reduced fat cheese and maybe tomatoes or whatever else I have sitting around. And then I'm not hungry. If I ate the big cinnamon roll, an hour from now, I would be hungry. Yeah, and eggs are just a great food. Um, you know, I know sometimes when I feel really, really hungry for breakfast, and I, I, I'm craving eggs. I have eggs and bacon and eggs and sausage a lot. And I'll say, hey, uh, yeah, I'll try to eat three eggs, three eggs and two pieces of sausage. And it's, a, I can't eat three eggs. It's like, it's a lot of, you know, and and one egg is only seventy calories, but they're just very filling. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's with all the whole foods, you know. Like you're saying, I think processed foods can get you. You can go to Safeway and buy everything. You can just throw in the microwave and heat up. But uh, well, and and that's part of the problem too. I think Hans is that um, you know you can just keep throwing more in the microwave to heat it up. Um, whereas, like you said, with your eggs and spinach, you had to you had to you had to make that. Right. You know, you had to take some time to prepare it. And, you know, let's say you were hungry after you prepared those, that eggs and spinach. Let's say you were a little bit hungry afterwards. Are you going to make any more? Probably not. I wouldn't. No. Like, eh, that's just too much work. I don't feel like doing it, right? Right. If you could warm it up in the microwave, take it out of the freezer and just keep throwing it in the microwave to warm it up, it's easy. And that's part of the problem is most of us have, you know, an unlimited food source at home or darn near and you know if you have that processed food stuff you can just keep eating more and more of it right i totally agree with that and and shelly and i we both like to cook you know in the evening i find that kind of relaxing for whatever yes. reason um and i've found out that it's just as easy to cook healthy as it is to cook unhealthy you know uh, and, and it's fun it's fun. Yeah. I found some new ways of making things and whatnot, um, and I enjoy it. Um, and while we're on that topic, um, you know, I, I I agree that it can be easy. And I, I did a little short, a short little. Uh, um, I created a thread with some videos about eating healthy and how easy it is and how cheap it is because we often hear. You know, and I want your opinion on this. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. We didn't prepare for this, but I, I, I think I know where you'll go with it. We hear all the time how, how, how eating healthy is so expensive, and that's why people don't do it. You got any comments on that? Uh, well, <laughs> you can look at that in a lot of ways because, I, I don't know, you go to the store and you can buy fairly healthy food that's not processed, you know, buy food that's food. Um, it doesn't cost you really any more than buying processed food and, and there's other expenses too like for me i'm not paying a copay on high blood pressure pay. exactly right <laughs> you know and and i mean you could look at it indirectly you know maybe if you didn't change your ways you would have a heart attack and that's expensive right you know yeah. so there is you know you can look at the indirect costs and we either pay now or we pay later but let's use let's use your example of eggs and spinach I mean, eggs are like, if you buy them six dozen at a time, they're like 10 cents a piece. Yes. You know, and spinach, a bag of spinach is, I don't know, a few dollars, right? So, yeah. I mean, you're, you're eating for a buck. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the most. And, and that cinnamon roll we were talking about, you know, if you bought that cinnamon roll 
one at a time, like at Costco or or Cinnabon or whatever, I'm going to guess off the top of my head, it's going to be a $5 cinnamon roll. I, I don't really know, but it's it's going to be, it's you know, um, I suppose if you baked them yourself, they'd be a little bit less expensive, but but still, um, right. you know, that stuff, it gets, it gets expensive. Very much. Um, you know, or a bag of potato chips. You were talking about chips when you're snacking on chips at school. I mean, honestly, Hans, I can eat a I can eat a complete bag of potato chips. That's no okay. There's salt and vinegar. I could kill that bag, right? Right. And that's why I just don't have them in the house. Because if I did, I would eat them. Correct. Yeah. Same boat. Exactly. Um, and you know, kind of back to like not paying the copays and all that. I enjoy not having to remember to take a high blood pressure pill or right. But I, I get it kind of a kick you turn on the tv and you know, geez there's an ad for high blood pressure medicine for pre-diabetic medicine for being diabetic for this or no one ever or you know covid or whatever you know nobody gets on tv and says hey you just need to lose some weight right i know and you know um as a pharmacist it, it it's it's very powerful that i i talk all the time about how you know i don't believe in medications to treat long-term disease that are especially they're related to lifestyle and so many of those diseases whether it be high blood pressure whether it be um diabetes they're related you don't need a drug to fix your problem i mean you're going to treat a symptom of high glucose with those drugs um or the high blood pressure but you've got other issues going on fix the problem and the problem is you're overweight. I mean, that's, that's the problem. Fix that prop, fix that. And a lot of things get better. Right. You know, and, and totally agree. We, we, want, we, we've become a society where we want to solve everything with a pill instead of yeah. actually taking responsibility and doing something. Yeah. I, I get a little, you know, I'm at the high school and you look at some of the kids and you feel bad for them when you see some of their eating habits and, and you know they're getting bigger or whatnot. I, I worry about those kids because that's not a that's not a healthy journey through high school that way. Well, as you know, Hans, um, it's it's an it's an epidemic. I mean, it really is. And you know, when you or I were in high school, um, you know, out of a hundred kids, there was probably one obese kid, right? Right. I mean, there, there just were not fat kids when you and I were in high school, and now. Um, over 50% of the kids are obese. It's 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 scary. Now, I'm gonna place the blame on mostly the parents. And I've had parents come to me before and they say, Well, I I don't know what to do. My kid's overweight. And I'm like, Well, you gotta change your habits. I mean, you're overweight too. So, and I've been there. I mean, I had a I, my youngest son was overweight and it was hard for me to do anything about it, say anything about it until I changed my habits. And, and then he definitely changed his and, and um, you know, it's, it's stuck with him for the rest. You know, he's 19 years old now and it's stuck with him. So, um, you know, parents, you got to be good role models. Exactly. Our, our youngest boy had put on a little weight and I think he was inspired and he's really changed his body over the last. Absolutely. I'm not surprised. Yeah. So yeah. we have a little, uh, a little ongoing Oh, I don't know what to call it at, with our family. I told my kids after after we all got to healthy weight, it's like, okay, let's make a pact that it's okay to call to call each other fat. So if we get fat again, we can call it call it out and say, hey, Dad, you're fat. <laughs> so right, please, you know, call me out. <laughs> all right, we are we are going to. Uh, I told you last year, Shelly and I made a goal. And, go to Belize, you know, yeah. a certain way, and we did. Well, this spring break, we're actually going to take both our boys, like our youngest boy has done a great job, we're going to take both our boys and future daughter-in-law to uh, Belize and, and celebrate a little more, so. That, that'll that be a blast. That'll be a blast. I've, yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about Belize. Um, yeah, and, and part of losing weight is I want to, I'm in my 50s, I still want to do things with my kids, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's one thing that inspired me is that, um, you know, I was turning 40 when I w um, started my weight loss journey. And um, I wanted to be able my kids weren't quite teenagers yet. But I wanted to be able to enjoy their teen years as they got active. And, um, you know, honestly, Hans, and I say it all the time on our podcast, 50 is not old, 60 is not old. I mean, 70 is not old. 
I have men and women that are in their 70s um, that are patients, and they are incredibly healthy. Um, you know, one of them I can think of, she's in her mid-70s. She teaches jazzercise three times a day. I mean, it's amazing, you know, and um, she's just, you know, she's incredible inspiration. And, um, you know, one of the other things I like to say about that is that one of the reasons that we, you know, perform, we always say, well, as we get older, performance declines and we don't perform as well. But I think one of the reasons that is, and there's starting to be more studies about this, is that one of the reasons we quit, one of the reasons we stop perform, um, our performance declines is because we stop performing. You know, if we keep working out like we did when we were 16, 17, or 18, if we were active then, you know, our performance isn't going to decline. So, I mean, eventually it does catch up to us, but, you know, the longer we can stay healthy, the longer we can um, stop that from happening. Yeah. Uh, the, the concept of old is just a mindset. I think it is. And, and the other thing, you know, we're talking about kids is, I think Shelly and I both believe is even though your kids are out of the house or our kids are out of the house or out of college, but you're still a role model. Yeah. And what do you really want to model for your kids that part of life is you get old, fat, sit in a recliner and hope to live long enough to retire. And then what kind of role model is that? I mean, exactly. that's not what I want to be. So, right. I agree with you hundred percent. Uh, you know, I want my kids to, to say, oh, yeah, look at dad. He's still moving. Mom, she's still moving, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 um, when my kids were teenagers, I, my oldest son was telling me, he's like, oh, dad, I'm going to, and he started lifting weights. And he's like, oh, dad, you know, you know how kids are. I'm sure um, you've had something like the experience like this with your kids. Oh, dad, I'm going to be able to, you know, I'm going to be able to lift more than you in when I'm in high school. I'm like, uh, you know, you'd better really start working out pretty hard to do that. Um, but I got to tell you, he he did he didn't do it in high school, but he definitely did it in college. And you know, it's a it's a good you know it's a good. Uh, but so now I tell him, I'm like, okay, you're stronger than me possibly in a certain areas, but you still can't outrun me, outrace me on a bike. So you know, that's what I tell him. You got, you got to have little things. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I, I think one thing, my kids and I, we, we are a little competitive. It, we get accused of that every now and then. It doesn't even matter what it is, but yeah, it's, no, it's, it's it. healthy. <laughs> it's, it's healthy, you know? Absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, so, Hans, as we uh, uh, wind this podcast up, what, what do you have a passion for? I have a passion for life. I have a passion to awesome. do things, you know? I, I want to... I want to travel. You know, we, we've done a pretty good job. We went to Montana quite a few times last year. We went to Belize. We've been in Coeur d'Alene last weekend. We're, you know, I can't remember where we're going next. We're going somewhere. Anyway, um, I like that. I, I want to do things. I want to, the world's big. I want to go out and see it. I want to be part of it. I want to, I like to be outside. I want to fish. I like to hunt. Um, you know, I'd rather do life than sit back and watch somebody else do it. So absolutely, absolutely. So, if anybody has any questions for you, Hans, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, probably on Facebook would be the easiest, or at hrworkingteen at gmail dot com. Awesome, awesome. So, what what would the as as we uh, in the last minute we got here? What what are the final two sentences you would like to say about your weight loss journey to inspire others? I would just say it feels too good not to feel good. You know, life should be something you enjoy. And it's an adventure, not a destiny. It's enjoy it. Feel yeah. And, and, and as we say that, you know, um, some people think, you know, you lost 70 pounds and you said you're pretty much, uh, you know, probably going to end up with that um, or stop at the 70 pounds. Um, but you got to realize it's a, it's a journey and it's dynamic and it's, it's never over. Right. Right. It, it, and it's enjoyable. It is, it is fun. It's like, like a journey of misery. You know, it's not the trail of tears or anything. It's, it's fun. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so all right. Well, thank you for sharing your story, Hans. Um, you'll have to keep us updated and stay tuned for our podcast on CrossFit. You'll, you'll definitely like that one. Well, so thank you Hans for, um, sharing your story today and thank you listeners and viewers for tuning in. 
Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. 